Pleased to be joined now from Arizona by one of the best MMA coaches in the world, Eddie Char. Eddie, great to see you, man. How's everything going over there? Doing good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Speaking to you from uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Big fight coming up for Zombie. House preparations going down Ige. Really tough test for him, but he's a legend of the game. He's been here before. So how pleased are you with what you're seeing from him? Uh, camp's going really well. Uh, I know everybody says that, but um, last camp we had in Korea, I uh, didn't have my whole coaching staff and sparring partners and so forth and uh, all the resources that we have out here in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's, it's going really, really well. He, he's way ahead of schedule, wrapping things up uh, next week. And uh, we'll be heading to Vegas uh, next, next Tuesday. As I mentioned, I'm speaking to you from out in Asia. When it comes to guys who've made an impact coming from Asia to the UFC or just the whole sport in general, outside of pride, not many have done what, what Zombie have done and, and kind of resonated with people so much. What is it, do you think, that makes him special and makes him who he is? I think uh, his fighting style, probably a crowd favorite, you know. Uh, his name ha has a big value to it. But uh, I think mostly his style. I mean, uh, he's hit, I think, seven bonuses. Um, he's always exciting to watch, whether it be on his feet or on the ground. And uh, he always brings it 100%. So Ige does the same thing. I mean, he's not he's not called 50K for no reason. He has quite... He's got some good bonuses on himself. He has a great camp. Uh, I know his coach is over there as well. And we're looking forward to a, a good, good fight on June 19th. Yeah, it's, uh, he, he just, both of those guys have that habit. Do you think it's a potential fight of the year candidate, given what we've seen in recent years from Zombie? I mean, even the Yaya Rodriguez fight, he didn't come out the right side of it, but that was just a classic. Yeah. Uh, I hope we just get a quick finish. I mean, uh, Usually when you got fight of the year and, and fight of the night and all that stuff, it, it means that both parties are taking a lot of damage. Uh, I, for one, would just like to see us get a quick finish, and I'm sure they do as well, but uh, you never know what happens in this sport. I mean, sometimes we don't – I don't like to say it's going to be a barn burner. It's going to be, uh, you know, a stand-up brawl because a lot of times it, it isn't when, when the expectations are so high. But uh, for this one, I just feel like uh, – Everything is there to be making a super exciting fight. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens. How important is this in terms of getting him right back up there? Having, you know, the division's really at a fascinating point right now because you've got the two guys on tough, of course, Vulcan and Ortega. Then you've got Yair fighting Max, which has kind of raised a few eyebrows but could be entertaining. So whoever makes the biggest statement is kind of can jump right up in there. I mean, does it feel like an important time in history for featherweight? Um, yeah, I think the featherweight division is, is stacked. It's been kind of shuffled around a little bit with Zabi being out and uh, yeah, you're getting that the, the fight with Holloway. That's a fight we've always wanted. Zombies always wanted to fight Holloway. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll get him next. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I think it puts him right back in the mix if he, if he gets a good finish and a, win, a victory. I still think Holloway will, will probably be next if he were to win that year fight. But uh, even if he is next, you know, we'd love to get the winner of that or the loser of whoever. And then, we're, you know, hopefully we're about one fight away from the title shot. I'm not sure if it's a, a cliche or not that uh, they say you, you learn more from your losses, right? Uh, you know, Zombie is saying he put on a bunch of weight after the Ortega loss. I mean, how's he, how's he dealt with that now? Is he just desperate to get back in there to fully put that behind him? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of guys just judge people for their last fight. And you're only as good as your last fight. But uh, as far as uh, him putting on weight and, and being depressed, and, you know, I've seen some of those articles. Dummy puts on, and I think every fighter puts on weight <laughs> regardless. I mean, that's not your walk around weight of whatever you fight at. And so I thought that was a little bit taken out of content. But um, yeah, it's definitely a tough, tough loss considering we knew what was at stake, uh, you know. If we, if we won that fight, he would have, he would have been fighting Volkanovski. Uh, but things happen for a reason. Definitely learn from it. We grew from it. I think, uh, I hope people don't think that's a blueprint on how to beat zombie southpaw and kick and run and do all that. We prepare pretty well for this camp for, for that style as well. And the spinning back fists and so forth and spinning elbows. And so, um, you know, like I said in a couple of other interviews, zombies looking to open up his whole offense. 
uh, as far as wrestling, jiu-jitsu, grappling, striking, you know, you know, everything, all of the above, kind of restricted him. For his last fight, we were so worried about the ground game of Ortega, the guillotines, and so forth. We, we, we didn't want him to wrestle as much, in which he did. But this time, we're just going to let him loose. Uh, you know, he, his ground is, I think it's underrated, but he submitted Poirier. Um, he's got a twister. You know, his ground game is solid. You know, our jiu-jitsu coach is saying he's just, he's, he's, he's a black belt when it comes to no gi. It's just that he doesn't have the, the rank to it. So, yeah, so I mean, that, that submission on Poirier was one of the most amazing submissions in the history of the UFC, probably. Interesting that Dustin's now at 55. Uh, what did you think about that? Because, I mean, you spoke about it with Zabit being out. The division was kind of a little bit stuck for, for a while. And, and there was some articles, I don't know if it was direct quotes from Zombie, that he was thinking about taking a fight at 55. Were you supporting that? Was that, was that going to be the play for a little while if, if nothing was coming to fruition at the top of the 45 division? No, at that time, uh, the division was stagnant. We, we, we got a couple of names. He said, yes, yes. They said they weren't ready. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say the names, but uh, there were two top 10 guys. and uh, We just weren't able to put those fights together. So we were kind of just sitting out, odd man out. And then uh, we looked at a couple of 55 fights. It's not that we wanted him. Uh, I wanted him to go up or, or he wanted to go up. There were just a couple of fights we thought that he would match up well against it, and uh, we were willing to take him, but uh, the UFC said no, and so we, we waited, 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 and then we got Ige. Is that the full focus, do you think, just uh, you know, for the rest of the career, focus on 45 for Zombie, or, or do you think that's something for the future, maybe, going up? No, I don't think he'll be fighting at 55. He, he realizes he's too small for that division, or the guys are too big. And so uh, 45 is his home. Uh, this, will, this is where he's going to remain. It's, uh, it's going to be a really fascinating fight. Can't wait for it. What's the biggest goal for you personally in 2021 for the rest of the year? Win world titles. Uh, when I got here to fight ready about a year and a half ago, our owner, uh, Dave Zellwein, kind of told us and sat us down and said, I want you guys to write down some goals, what you want to achieve in the next few years. And so our coaching staff literally had the same thing uh, without looking at each other's notes. And, and I said, I want to, I want two world champions by 2021. I'd like to have this many guys in the top five, the top 10. And then uh, our owner, Dave was like, let's just focus on one goal. He goes, let's get two world champions. So uh, I had the pleasure of working with Henry Cejudo, winning a belt there. And then, um, you know, zombies right there. So that was, that, that's the goal that I'm looking to get personal goals. That would do nicely. That would do nicely. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for making this happen. You're the man. Cheers. My pleasure. Thank you.